Robert, independent caller in Austin, Texas. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> it's amazing how much uh, different information on this, this underwear bomber there is. This guy never had a visa. The gentleman was let on the plane, literally forced. They, they tried to keep him off the plane, and two attorneys who have just submitted, you can go look on YouTube, said that <clears throat> he was let on the plane forcibly. He was denied access to that airplane two or three times in some unnamed office in, this, in the U.S. government. And you should look this up, sir. They, they let him on that plane forcibly. He was not allowed to be on that plane. And somebody put him on that plane. Now, why would a CIA agent, the, the unnamed agency, want to get that guy on the plane? I'm not familiar with the story of uh, anybody attempting to stop him. Um, my understanding is that the uh, the PETN that the underwear bomber was carrying uh, was was uh, not detectable by the standard screening that he went through at uh, Amsterdam, and that he uh, what I've heard is that he raised no alarm. I wasn't there, obviously, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Chuck in Jacksonville, Florida, independent caller. Good morning. Oh, sorry, I moved to that. Let's go on to Devin. We already hit Chuck. Devin, Republican in Derry, New Hampshire. Good morning, Devin. Good morning. Hi there. Uh, I heard your guest mention the underwear bomber a little while mm -hmm. ago. And uh, I just wanted to mention attorney Kurt Haskell's uh, testimony at the Mutalib trial last week. He was a witness to the event, and he says that Mutalib didn't have a passport and wasn't going to be allowed onto that plane, except he was escorted by two men, two men in suits who claimed national security in order to get him onto the plane. And uh, Kurt Haskell, in his, in his testimony, said all this. He wasn't allowed to actually be a witness to the trial because they got him to plead guilty. But I just feel that the real terrorist that we should be afraid of is our federal government, and the TSA sticking their hands down our pants isn't going to make things better. It might I don't appreciate that last uh, comment, but Devin's bringing up this question that one of our earlier callers mentioned of um, an idea that, that Mutalib was somehow forced to go on the plane or was escorted by agents of some kind. I am unfamiliar with that um, story. Um, I can't say it's true or I can't say it's false. Um, my understanding is that he was targeted for questioning by U.S. Customs and Border Protection mm which was operating passenger screening for overseas passengers like uh, Abdul Muttalib, and uh, that they had planned to question him when he arrived in Detroit. Now, obviously, if he was successful, you know, they wouldn't have been able to question him because he would have blown himself and 360 other people up. Let's talk about a recent Inspector General report. There okay, let's go to Mark in Wayne, Michigan, on our independent line. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, C-SPAN. Good morning, America. And also, good morning, Mr. Carter. McCarter. Good morning. Uh, yes, I have a question about you claiming that you had no idea about that uh, underwear bomber being helped onto that plane. I live on disability, and I even knew about that. If you've seen the evidence that I have gathered about this individual and about the warehouses that were completely filled with all of these body scanners and no airports were buying them. So then this underwear bomber thing came along and every one of them got sold immediately. This is how they work. These elites that have hijacked the federal government are using it by use, use of the media, by lying to the people. So Mark, so Mark, you're saying that there's an infrastructure in place that's geared towards making money off these crises. So Mark is claiming that it's a, a generated crisis in order to, to help businesses uh, uh, make money. Well, I have to say, you know, after after this program, I'm kind of interested in talking to my colleague Tony Kimmery, who specializes in intelligence, to see if he is aware of, you know, uh, the stories that somebody might have helped the underwear bomber onto this plane, uh, because I, I certainly am unaware of them. Um, as for the, uh, there's lots of accusations of, uh, you know, government being in bed with industry on various issues. Um, I t I know as a matter of policy that the Bush administration had actually had. A plan for the whole body imagers to be rolled out, and um, that that was under consideration by the Obama administration before the underwear bombing incident, and then that's just sort of accelerated that plan and put it into public view. 
Um, whereas this was always sort of on the paper um, because there is a realization that metal detectors can only detect metal. And we've had these problems before where people bring illicit items onto planes uh, because they're non-metallic. Bill, Republican in Fairfield, Connecticut, our last call. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I hate to keep hammering you at this underwear thing, but yes, there's been a lot of news about this. In fact, it was televised on C-SPAN before Congress. Under Secretary of State for Management, Patrick Kennedy said that um, the gentleman was allowed to get on the airplane uh, because they were tracking him, which is troubling in either case, knowing that he had a bomb on him and, and allowing him to get on the plane in the first place. Uh, again, I'm, un I'm unaware of that. All right. Mickey McCarter, Senior Washington Correspondent for Homeland Security Today. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Talking about the Federal Air Marshals Program. It's part of our Your Money segment we do every Monday here in Washington Journal.